So as an instructor, I have several different ways of adding content to my course. I can manually create content. This is an example of a simple content page. In this case, it's just text and images, but it can be just about anything uh, that you can display over the internet. Uh, you can create the content manually by clicking on add top page for instance or add sibling page to create a sub page for this particular one so either one will do so we'll click on add top page just as an example and we will create a new page my new page you can use the editor down below to create some content this content can be as simple or as complex as you like if you have files available to insert into your content, you can open up the file manager. Here you can see a list of the files that are available for this particular course. So we're going to insert a little flash movie. So I will choose that, click on the insert link, and that automatically inserts the media tag into my content. I can also choose to turn off the visual editor if I want to edit the HTML of the page and refine it further. So I will save that content. Save. And now you can see that my content and my little bit of useless flash is inserted into the content of the page. So the other way, other ways of creating content, you can import content in standardized formats. You can use the import export content tool, in this case the export at the top, you can use to export your content to create backups or share your content or create packages to import into a content repository. Or you can import existing content into your course in those same formats, either as common cartridges or as IMS content packages. So we have a number of content packages already available. We'll get the URL to one of those. In this case we've got several of the old ATutor How To course content packages available. So we will grab one of these, say the Getting Started unit. Copy the link location of that unit and paste it into the import by URL field and click on the import and that will add another getting started section to the course. The other possibility is backups so under manage you can click on backups in this case you would need to create a backup of this particular course and we will quickly do that. Click on create enter a description for the backup if appropriate otherwise just click on create and that generates a backup for safekeeping you can download this to a local system just in case something goes wrong you've always got a copy of your course or you can use it to restore the content into this course or another course so in this case we're going to take the backup we just created of the entire course and we're going to restore the whole thing once again by selecting all and restore and it generates another copy of the course you can see down here at the on the left at the bottom of the content menu so now we'll take a quick look at some of the other tools that are available under the manage tab you can post announcements these announcements are posted to the, to the course homepage you can set up assignment Dropbox so that students can upload files into the file storage utility to drop off assignments. Backups you've seen, you can create new backups or upload existing ones. You can set up a chat to have online synchronous communication with your students and keep a chat transcript to create a copy of the chat so that students can access it later. Other content tools, in addition to creating, importing, and exporting content, the Tile Repository allows you to search through a remote repository and import content from there or export content to the repository. And you can also click on Content Usage 
to get some statistics about how students are using the content in the course. The course email tool allows you to send an email out to your, all of your students or a portion of the students in the course. If, for instance, you wanted to post a bulk email message, for instance, an announcement for the course. The course tools you've already seen. Course enrollment allows you to set up students in your course. The file manager allows you to upload files into the course that you can use as resources within your content. Forums, it's possible to set up forums. In this case, we'll set up a simple forum. And this can be used for communication within the course. So now we click on forums, you can see that there's a forum available, although there's no posts. In this case, we'll probably want to set up an initial post, so we click on new threads. And enter a message I don't know what the world will do for this demo and we can just subscribe to this particular forum thread so when there are replies to it we get the replies by email so we'll post that so now that now the quorum is, forum is set up for this course and we return to the manage tab Next we have frequently asked questions, needs no description. Glossary items, you can ent enter glossary items for your content. If you're using tests and surveys, you can turn on the gradebook or manage grades through the gradebook module. If you're offering group activities within your course, you can use the groups tool to set up groups. You can set up polls to quickly survey your students manage the properties of your course, which you've already seen, set up a reading list with various types of resources that students can access in addition to the content of the course, review different statistics about your course, when students are logging in, how long they spend on pages, for instance, student tools can be set up, which you've already been introduced to, and tests and surveys can be set up. So a quick look at tests and surveys, you can see in this case We've got a bunch of different tests, each of which are duplicated because we started with a backup of course and then we imported another backup of a course. So you can take a quick look at the tests now. In this case we will just look briefly at the properties of the test. In this case you've got the, the title of the course and no test description in this case. The number of attempts that are allowed, in this case it's set to unlimited, so students can take it as often as they want, or you can set it to a limited number of attempts. You can set it up so that it links to the course description on My Courses page, so students can access course or tests directly from My Courses. You can set up a course to be, or a test to be anonymous. If, for instance, you wanted to have a test created as a survey, you can set it up so that guests can also access a test or not, and various other information that can be used to set up properties for a test. At any time, you can click on the handbook link in the top right corner to see the documentation for whatever tool you happen to be using. So if you need more information on creating tests, you click on Edit Tests and Surveys up in the top right corner to get all the information you need. There's a link to other sections of a handbook as well in the top right corner depending on where you happen to be within your course. So that's basically it. Um, there are many other features that you can add into the course. The best way to learn about those features is to access the eTutor handbook it is always available through a link in the footer. You can click on that. You'll see that there's basic user documentation, documentation for administrators, instructors, as well as for developers if you plan on developing new features for a tutor or perhaps designing a new module. You can also create a theme for a tutor to give it a new look. All of this information is available with 
each, each.